Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, special edition, a week of revival and reformation. I'm your host, Andrew Henriquez, and this series is entitled Seven Final Days on Earth. The final seven days on earth experience seven sanctuary feasts. And brothers and sisters, again, I'm going to ask you kindly to call somebody, text somebody, wake up somebody, share this with someone that they can receive the blessings that is in store for all of us. And by God's grace, I hope this scripture is fulfilled in our hearts today. Acts chapter 1, the Bible says in verse number 3, that Christ showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them for today's and verse number four he says that he told them not to depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father and verse number five verse number eight you shall receive baptism not only by water but the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This was spoken on Resurrection Day. And verse number 80 says now, you shall receive power once the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So by God's grace today, those words that were spoken after Christ's resurrection, may those words be fulfilled in my life, in your life today. All right, brothers and sisters, Let's get right into it. Today, our speaker is Evangelist Marco Dumi. Brother, welcome to Save to Serve and Prophesy again. Thank you, Pastor Enriquez. It is a great honor for me to receive this invitation and to be here with all of you, Save to Serve, in these special moments. All right, brother. Just kindly share with us briefly a few things about yourself and your ministry and how individuals can receive and access your spiritual content, material resources that they can be edified physically, mentally, and spiritually. And then tell us what to expect from this message that you'll be sharing with us today. Sure. My name is Marco Dumi and uh... I'm now in Italy and uh, four years ago, we started a ministry here called uh, Road Truth, uh, through which we are working for uh, salvation of souls here in Italy and everywhere Italian people are in the world. Um, if you understand Italian or uh, if you are just curious to hear the gospel message in Italian, you can find us typing on uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook, these words wrote truth. And, uh, you know, in these uh, four years in our public seminaries, we try to combine the message of health with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, putting a special emphasis, a special light on the message of the three angel, because in a country like this, this message remained in silence for too long. And uh, many, many people in these years uh, hearing the word of truth uh, get out of Babylon. In this light, uh, we were involved in making uh, uh, brochure, magazines for evangelists, and translating books of our pioneers like A.T. Jones, uh, Bagoner, Crozier, James White, and the Spirit of Prophecy through Ellen White, because this special light must also shine here in Italy too. And um, to, through this message, I really hope uh, you to be encouraged by five simple lessons and experience about the Feast of First Fruits. Amen. All right, friends, we, we have heard, we have heard it. Now, today, our singing evangelist is going to be Sister Jomana Sauters. She'll be singing two songs, and the first one is going to be Holy Thine. Then Evangelist 
Marco Dumi will present the spoken word. Sister Jomana Souders will return with the song of appeal. Brothers and sisters, I'm hungry for God's word today. And I hope that you are ready to receive the words of life. Let's get right into it, brothers and sisters. Sister Souders, the microphone is yours. Hello, my name is Jomana Souders, and I want to say thank you for joining us for this week's Bible series, Seven Final Days on Earth, Experiencing Seven Sanctuary Feasts. Today's topic is going to be first fruits. And so I pray that as I sing, you would join me along. I will be singing hymn 308, Holy Thine. And as we sing this song together, let it not just mentally prepare us for the message, but also prepare our hearts. Let us be blessed. I would be dear Savior, holy thine. Teach me how, teach me how. I would do thy will, O Lord, not mine. Help me, help me now. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my vow. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, O Lord, just now. What is worldly pleasure, wealth, or fame? Without thee, without thee, I will leave them all for thy dear name. This my wealth shall be. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my vow. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, O Lord, just now. As I cast earth's transient joys behind, come thou near, come thou near. In thy presence all in all I find. This my comfort here. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my vow. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, O oh Lord, just now. Holy thine. This is my vow, holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, O Lord, just now. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and all of you that are connected with us in this moment, as I said before, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, Pastor and all saved to serve for this special invitation. You know, like the Millerites and all of our pioneers in the days before 22 October 1844, they were preparing themselves, waiting to meet the Lord. In the same manner, all of us today, in these solemn times, we have to prepare ourselves to meet Jesus that soon, very soon, is coming for the second time. But uh, we have a greater privilege than them because we must not only wait his coming but we can also hasten it, preaching this gospel of the kingdom to all the inhabitants of the earth and preparing a zealous people in good works that will meet the Lord in the air. 
As uh, you may have heard from the pronunciation of my words, you understand that English is not my first language at all. My first language is Italian because, as I said, I was born and I grew up in Italy. Our ministry is in Italy and it is for Italian people. And uh, my second language is Romanian because my origins are Romanian. But English or American is, uh, is my, let's say, my third language because I studied it a little when I was at school years ago and after that I learned it just a little here and a little there. So excuse me if some words may be not uh, very clear. But I'm sure that if you will have with you your Bible and you will read with your own eyes the Bible words that I will quote and read, then I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will work in the hearts and minds of each of us for our salvation. I want to start reading a Bible verse that we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we will read verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul said, and, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Dear brothers and sisters, what will impress your heart today will not be complicated words, excellency of speech, eloquent phrases, but it will be the pure and simple word of God that we will work as a power for our salvation and without wasting any more time because there is so many, so much things to say. I would like to enter in the core of today's preach and Bible study and I really want to have a little word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you in this moment for uh, this opportunity. I pray that uh, you can pour out your Holy Spirit for every one of us, for me, for my words to be clear and inspired by you and for my brothers and sisters that are hearing, give to them understanding and make every one of us to make a real experience through the message of today. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the first two days of this event entitled Final Seven Days on Earth Experience Seven Sanctuaries Feasts has already passed away. The first two days and the experience of the first two feasts has already been explained. Passover and unleavened bread. Today, by God's grace, God's grace, we are going to analyze the spiritual experience of the third feast called First Fruits that all of us have to put in practice in our daily life before Christ return. As uh, we have just seen, the first three feasts of the sanctuary in order are Passover, Unleavened Bread and First Fruits. And listen carefully what the Bible said about this feast. First fruits. In Leviticus chapter 23, Leviticus chapter 23, we will read from verse 9, 9 and 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when thy be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then thy shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. 
The first thing that uh, we want to notice about the feast of first fruit is that this feast has to begin with the entry of God's people into the promised land of Canaan. Canaan. In other words, the experience we will study on this occasion is exactly the experience that will allow us to enter in the salvation of heavenly Canaan and after that to live on this earth forever. Just as the people of Israel celebrated sacrificing the Passover lamb to be able to leave Egypt and they ate manna. What was manna? Manna was unleavened bread because manna doesn't contain leaven. They ate manna for 40 years to be able to enter in the promised land of Canaan. So, dear brothers and sisters, we have to make the same things in a spiritual experience. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice every day dying every day to ourselves and continuing to remain dead to sin every day, no living, no sin in our life to be able to enter through Jesus Christ into the heavenly canon. But let's see now five practical lessons that uh, we can learn from the spiritual experience of the Feast of First Fruit. How many lessons? Five. Five lessons. And I really hope that you have your book notes and your pen to notice all these Bible verses and these five practical and simple lessons to enter in the heavenly canon for our salvation. I really want to read, to repeat and read another time Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10. I will read another time. It said, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When thy be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then Thy shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto, unto the priest. The children of Israel have to bring to the Lord a first fruit. But a first fruit of what? A first fruit of the harvest. But uh, what more exactly? What was this harvest? Let's see what the Bible said, the scripture said in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10 and we will read verse 35. Nehemiah 10 verse 35. And to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees year by year unto the house of the, of the Lord. We know that this first fruit was the first fruit of the seeds and cereals from the ground and the fruits from the trees. In other words, what Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 tell us that is the best food for men, a plant-based diet that God make to grow up from the ground and on the trees for our benefit and our meat. First fruit of this. First fruit of this. Of this. What else Leviticus tell us? Leviticus 23. What else Leviticus 23 tell us about this feast of first fruit? Very important. Leviticus chapter 22, 23 
and we will read verse 14. Leviticus 23 verse 14. And thy shall eat neither bread, nor parked corn, nor green earth, until the self same day that thy have brought, brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute for every throughout, throughout your generation in all your dwellings. Brothers and sisters, this is very, very important. If the people of God didn't offer, offer this first fruit first, they could not take and eat the rest of the harvest. You understand it? First, they had to bring, like an offering, this first fruit. If not, they couldn't eat nothing. The first and practical lesson that uh, we can learn from uh, this feast is that we must always, always begin with God. Yes, always we have to begin with God because this first fruit have to be an offering to God. The first to God. And we have to learn the important lesson that we have to start and to begin always with God. We have to begin our lives with Him, begin every day with Him, begin every meal with Him, begin every affair or business with Him, and not only this, but we have to think first for the benefit of God's church and mission on this earth and after that we have to think of our personal benefit. I will explain better in this way. When a guest came to your home for lunch or dinner, what do you serve? Who do you serve first? Who? Who do you put on the plate first when a, ge when a guest came to your house? You put in the plate first to yourself or to your guest? You have to serve first to put in the plate of your guest. Yes. Well, God is our great guest every day. He is our great guest every day and in every occasion. Think about the experience of the feast of the first fruit. We learn that God must be first in our lives. The first important principle that we have to meditate and put in practice in our daily life, waiting and hastening the second coming of Jesus Christ is that we have to put God first in our daily life. Put God first in our daily life. I want to read you in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek thy first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is the first thing that we have to do? Seek thy first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And now I want to ask to you, what is one of the practical ways that the Bible presents to us to put God first in our life. 
in a practical way. How can we put God first in our daily life? And I want to read another Bible verse that we find in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, and we'll read verse 9. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. We have to honor God with our substance. We have to honor God with our increase. We have to honor God with our income. Yes, income. In fact, very often in the scripture, first fruits are related to tithes and offerings. Go with me in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 10, and we will read verse 37. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 37. And that we should bring the first fruits of our doubt and our offerings and the fruit of all manners of trees, of wine and of oil, unto the priest, to the chambers of the house of the God, of our God, and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the city of our tillage. You understand, brothers and sisters? First fruits is related to tithes and offerings in the Bible. And when month after month many of us receive salaries, what should be the right attitude? First God and His mission and after that, me and my family. And as the Hebrew know that if they have given God the first fruit of the harvest, God would bless all the rest of the harvest. So it is also for us. Because when we put aside, consecrate the tithes of the Lord, one part of ten, God will, will pour out a great blessing on the remaining nine parts. He will open the window of heaven and our families will be more blessed with the nine parts that were blessed than if they remain with all the ten parts that were cursed. Look at this in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44. 44. And we will read verse 30. Ezekiel 44. Verse 30. Ezekiel 44. Verse 30. The Bible said, And the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblation shall be the price. Thy shall also give unto the price the first of your doubt, that he may cause, listen carefully, that he may cause the blessings to rest in thine house. The blessing will be in your house. If we put God first in our life, by being cheerfully givers, we will take care, God, we will take care of us and our families, dear brothers and sisters. And the same principle also applies to the Lord's Holy Sabbath, one day of seven consecrated to the Lord. 
will bring a special blessings on the six working days. Brothers, sisters, test the Lord and he will work because he is faithful. Now, based on Leviticus chapter 23, 23 and the other passages that we has read, to whom the first fruits, tithes, offerings and donation has to be given, the Bible said to the priest and Levites. And my question now is only to them? Only to them? Not only to them. And I want to invite you to go in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we have here the prophet Elijah that is there with his students, the prophets, at the school of the prophets. And here now what is happening. 2 Kings chapter 4 and we will read verse 42. And there came a man from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley and full hairs of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. This man come and give to Elijah bread from the first fruits, consecrated first fruits, to give it to the people of the prophets that was studying at the school of prophets, that are working at the school of the prophets. And you know, first fruits, then tithes, offerings and donation, as well as for priests and Levites are also for the prophets, for those who are completely involved in the work of proclamation of the everlasting gospel, for those who are prophesying again, pastor, evangelist, missionaries, ministry, that are implied in the proclamation of present truth. But I want to ask you, but all pastors, all evangelists, all missionaries and all ministry has to receive donation, offerings, tithes, all ministry that are saying, that are preaching present truth should receive these offerings and tithes or donation? Not. Not my brothers and sisters. And what I will read now in these short Bible verses is a terrible reproach and advertisement to every one of us that we are working in the Lord's vineyard. Numbers 18. Numbers 18. And uh, we are reading Numbers 18, verse 12 and 13. Numbers 18, 12 and 13. All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and all the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I give thee. Verse 13. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto the Lord, shall be thine. And now, attention, everyone that is clean in thine house shall eat. 
of it. Who will eat of it? Who? Everyone? Not everyone. Who will receive tithes, offerings, donation? Who? Only who is pure. We must be pure. Not sin, but purity. Not living in sin and still preaching the three angel messages, but proclaiming present truth and living in righteousness. Because only that person that are pure in heart and in mind will be able to see God. The first lessons, the first lesson that we can learn from the feast of first fruits is that we must put God first in our daily life. I hope that you notice it. First lesson, we have to put God first in our daily life. The second lesson, but uh, no less important than the, the first, is that the ceremonies of the feast of the sanctuaries were types, symbols of the work and ministry of Christ on this earth. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 tell us that these feasts were a shadow of the things that were to come, but the body is Christ. The body is Christ. All these ceremonies, these feasts pointed to Christ. His work, his life, his ministry, and his work of salvation for every one of us. And let's understand what represent this feast, the first fruits, in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Leviticus chapter 23, and we will read from verse 9 to verse 11, to understand better. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When I be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then thy shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord, to be accepted for you. On the morrow of the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Like the Passover and the unleavened bread, the first fruits also represent a prophecy of the life and ministry of Jesus, which was fulfilled on the exact day indicated by the scripture. Let Passover represent Jesus' death on Friday and the unleavened bread, bread without leaven, bread without life, indicate that Jesus would remain without life in the tomb during the Sabbath day, resting according to the commandment. So the feast of the first fruits, that it happened the day after the Sabbath, it represents the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, as it began to down toward the first day of the week, the angel told to the woman who gone to the tomb that Jesus had risen on the third day, as he said. And as the first fruit of the sanctuary had to be taken and shaken, agitated before the Lord, so Jesus rose as the first fruit and appeared before the Father as a guarantee of the resurrection of all those who that are sleeping already or will sleep the sleep of death. And the Bible said to us in 1 Corinthians, go everyone to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we read to 
from, chap from verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But now, is Christ risen from the dead and become the first, the first fruit, first fruit of them that slept? I will read another time. But now, is Christ risen from the dead? and become the first fruit of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man is in his own order. Christ, the first fruit, Afterward, they that are Christ at this coming. And no, you know, we are living very solemn times. Is not that? The mark of the beast is at end. A time, a time of great tribulation and persecution is in front of us. And many of us will be called to sleep for a time. But when Jesus will return, he will bring the assurance and the guarantee of our resurrection be because he was the first fruit, the symbol of the resurrection of all righteousness in him, of all that are righteousness in him. 1 Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 15. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 15 through 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the, of the Lord, that uh, we, which are alive, and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with, with the Lord. If God will call me or you to fall asleep before the time, don't worry. God promises us resurrection and eternal life, but at the same time, this scripture encourages us by telling us that at the second advent of Jesus Christ, there will be a people of a people alive who will meet Jesus face to face. In fact, if in a first sense the feast of the first fruit teach us to put God first in our life, in a second place the feast of first fruit teach us that those who have fallen asleep or will fall asleep in the sleep of death in Christ will be resurrected. This is the second lesson. lesson. The third lesson that uh, we can learn from the Feast of First Fruit has to do with these last days, which precede the second advent of Jesus Christ. God will have a people, a first fruit among the inhabitants of the whole earth, the 144,000. <laughs> Look what the Bible said about these special people in these last days. Revelation chapter 14, we read verse 1, and I looked and yo, a lamb stand, stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him 
144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And now verse 4 and 5. These are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being, look now, attention, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And you know, I want, I really want to be part of it. And I hope you too, you so. But the question now is how can we be part of these people who will be a first fruit? To the Lord in these last days and the response we find it in James James chapter 1 verse 18 James chapter 1 verse 18 how can I be a part of these special people in these last days James chapter 1 verse 18 of his own will beget he has with the word of truth, that he should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, we must allow, allow his word of truth, his word of truth, because here the, the, the scripture said, of his own will beget he has with what? With the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruit. We must allow, allow, we must allow his word of truth to purify our hearts and make us truly free, free from sin. Only then, we will be an acceptable first fruit to God. But I want to ask you, through what? Through what? Through what? The truth, the word of truth, the truth of the word of God can change our hearts and our mind. Through what? Only through the Holy Spirit. In fact, Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 23, Romans 8, 23, said to us, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Every one of us that we had, what? The first fruits of the Spirit. Only through the Spirit, the word of truth can purify our heart and our mind. Yes, brothers and sisters. Only through the Holy Spirit, we can be a first fruit for the Lord. And when, when the Holy Spirit abound in, our, in us, in our character and in our daily practical life, we will manifest His fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit to be a first fruit for the God, for the Lord. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And we'll, we'll read verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, verse 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long sufferings, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. 
Against such there is no law. Only when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our character in this beautiful way, only then we will be the first fruit acceptable to God and could be part of the 144,000. I have another question for every one of us. What is the first fruit, the first known on this list that compound this fruit of the Spirit? What is the first known? The first known of this list is love. The first fruit is love. Dear brothers and sisters, without an authentic and genuine love for Christ, for Jesus our Savior, none of us will be qualified to be part of the 144,000. But only when we contemplate the life of Jesus and, and in a specific way, the final moments of his life, his sufferings, and his sacrifice, then our faith will be strengthened and we will feel a stronger love for our Savior Jesus Christ. The last lessons that I would like to present to you, and my time is running out to you, uh, in uh, this experience of the Feast of First Fruit, have as to be with evangelism. This is the last lesson, the last lesson, this five lesson, number five, with evangelism. And I want to read with you Romans, Romans chapter 16, Romans chapter 16, verse five, Romans chapter 16 verse 5 her with attention romans 16 verse 5 likewise greet the church that is in their house salute my well beloved ephenetus who is the first fruit of achaia unto Christ. Of Ephenetus, it is said that he was the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ. Not only one of the most eminent believers in that country, but one of the first that was converted to the faith of Christ. One that was offered up to God by Paul as the first fruit of his ministry there. In Acts of the Apostles, it is said that God had much people in Achaia, but special respect is to be paid to those that set out early, set out early, and come to work in the vineyard of at the first hour. Special respect for these people that are the first fruit of the mission for the evangelism, for the evangelism at the first scale. And you, you know, in America, in Africa, Asia or Europe, you can be a first fruit for God. You can be a man, a woman, a young or an elder who, where he is, can start a ministry for the salvation of soul, where no one has yet proclaimed the gospel. You can be the first missionary in your city or your village, like the two um, in demonia, the two persons with demons, you know, that meet Jesus Christ and became the first two missionaries for the Capoli. You can be one of these.
You can be a first fruit to God. The first of many who will be saved through your missionary effort, house to house, through Bible study and seminary. God is looking for a man in every city, in every village of this land that loudly announces the eternal, everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. So we will not only wait, but also hasten the return of our beloved Savior Jesus. Because it is good to remember, great controversy tells us that the first impulse of a regenerated soul is to bring order to Christ. Is that? Yes. You can be God's first fruit to evan evangelize nation, tribes, languages, and people. Brothers and sisters, my time is finished. I only want to summarize what we have learned so far and conclude these moments. The Feast of First Fruit teaches us number one to put God first in our lives, including tithes and offerings. Number two, teach us that through the resurrection of Jesus, our first fruit, it guarantees to all those who have tasted that or will taste that the resurrection, the promise of resurrection. Number three, in these last days, God will have a people of 144,000, a first fruit among the inhabitants of the whole earth. Number four, and I want to be part of this. Number four, if we want to be part of these people, we must give space to the Holy Spirit to transform our character and give us an authentic and genuine love for Jesus, our Savior. Number five, this love for Jesus will invite us to be missionaries. Where we are to evangelize, evangelize and bring as many people as possible to Christ. Then we will be a first fruit acceptable to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I want to conclude in this moment with a short prayer. Dear Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you in this moment because your word was clear for every one of us. We thank you for the experience that we learned, spiritual experience that we learned from this feast, first fruit. I pray to you, dear Father, to help every one of us to put in practice these five important, so important lessons in the life, in the daily life of everyone, every one of us. I pray you for this and I thank you because you will strengthen us and you will encourage us before Jesus Christ is returning. Thank you. Thank you, dear Father, in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I truly pray that that message was a blessing. And to solidify what we have heard, we are going to sing hymn 329, Take the World, But Give Me Jesus. And I sincerely pray that that will be the prayer of not just my heart, but our hearts. So join me in song and let us meditate upon these words. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name. But his love abideth ever through eternal years the same. 
Oh, the height and depth of mercy. Oh, the length and breadth of love. Oh, the fullness of redemption. Pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus, sweetest comfort of my soul. With my Savior watching o'er me, I can sing the billows roll. Oh, the height and depth of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love. Oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me view his constant smile. Then throughout my pilgrim journey, life will cheer me all the while. Oh, the height and depth of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus, in his cross my trust shall be. Till with clearer, brighter vision, face to face, my Lord, I see. Oh, the height and depth of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Amen. Praise the Lord. My friends, did you comprehend what you heard today? If you did, just type in the words, I understood by God's grace. And secondly, I want those of you who are alive to really interact with what you heard today. Number two, I simply want each person who is live right now to type one principal point that you deduced from this lesson one principal point that you garnered you gathered you grasped from this lesson i'll give you a few moments to type in that one primary point all right and while you're typing i will continue for the rest of you who are contemplating in receiving bible studies in order to commit and recommit your lives to Jesus through baptism, follow this one simple instruction. Send me an email at admin at stsministry.com and you'll be brought into the baptismal class in preparation to commit, recommit your lives through baptism. Again, admin at stsministry.com. And while you're type, typing in your points, I'm going to share this. May these words that we have heard today from evangelist Marco Dumi not lose its impact upon our minds. The first fruits, the first fruits, Romans chapter 6. This evangelist gave us five smooth stones. David, five smooth stones, but he only used one to overthrow and slay that giant Goliath. So send us that one point you got from this lesson. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and verse 4 summarizes these past three days. Passover. Evangelist Michael Verlas. Unleavened Bread. Evangelist Keenan Saunders. And First Fruits. Evangelist Marco Dumi. It says in verse 3, speaking of Christ's death, yes, his burial and resurrection, Passover, 
unleavened bread, first fruits. Verse 3, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. That's Passover. Verse 4, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, unleavened bread. We remain dead to self, dead to sin. Then it says that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, resurrection, raised up from the dead, first fruits, resurrection, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life, that is first fruits. And today I'm making a vow to God by his grace and power. Lord, today I choose to walk in the newness of life. Is this your response to God? Lord, help me to be crucified with you, to die daily, allow self not to rise, and to walk in the newness of life. If so, my friends, again, I need your one point that you grasped from this lesson. If so, just type in the words, Amen. All right, friends, we are here. We have covered three steps of seven. Again, friends, if I were you, I would share what we have received today. I would text somebody. I would call somebody. I would email somebody to join us tomorrow for another potent lesson. The last seven days on earth experience seven sanctuary feasts. In closing, I want to thank evangelist Mark Adumi for allowing God to use him to give us these five smooth stones addressing the first fruit. Friends, I have a, a sheet of paper here. <laughs> Three pages of notes. I took my notes. I learned something today. I saw things from a different perspective I never saw before. All right, friends. Pastor, can you give us one? Of course, I'll give you one. If you notice, the evangelist stated, the first fruits in Leviticus 23, verse 9 to verse 11, it had to be waved. When you wave something, brothers and sisters, he said it had to be shaken. Wave, shaken. Wave, shaken. And the first fruits, Christ's resurrection. What happened when Christ rose from the tomb? I had to go back and look at Matthew 28 and verse number 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. What happened? If you, like me, have ever experienced an earthquake, it shakes. Earthquake. The ground shakes. You move. It is in a wave pattern. Earthquake, brothers and sisters. Evangelist, you brought something to my mind today. I thank you in God's presence. And number two, the first fruits. Shaking, waving. Yes, we all have to go through a shaking. And now the evangelist ended with point number five. Love, only love for Christ, brothers and sisters. It's going to keep us rooted and grounded, connected to him in this time of shaking. Powerful lessons, evangelist Mark Odumi laid upon my heart today were you blessed today my friends if so type in i was blessed by god's grace and of course i would be remiss if i didn't say i also want to thank the singing evangelist jomana souders for those two numbers okay friends that's it let us be found faithful by now i have spoken long enough for you all to type in your points praise the lord by god's grace I will see you tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Make it a date. Don't be late. We will come and sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. So pastor, who will be preaching tomorrow and singing? See you tomorrow. Maranatha.